getting back. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. So excited um, that we're gathering here today, May the 18th. And um, the clock is moving along, the calendar, the pages are turning, and we are advancing further and further into the depths of 2022. So that's just the way it goes. All right, let's see. I am really, really excited that this, this particular year is giving us such an incredible opportunity to, to really understand what, what, what's our, our um, journey is all about as it pertains to connecting with, with God, with source, with spirit, to understand what it means when we are fully, completely in alignment with the creative source, because when we are in alignment with God, and I'm trying to change out the, the view, but I can't get that straight. Okay, we'll leave it this way. Um, when we are fully aligned with God, there is absolutely no way, no way to go through challenging times as we are right now without experiencing total peace, complete, complete peace. And one of the things that I absolutely love about the Course in Miracles is that we are, we are in essence, hold on a second, I'm trying to figure this thing out. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay. I don't know why it's doing that. Sorry about that. All right, then we'll do it this way. There are several of you who are not on camera. You're not going to be showing up on the screen, but that's okay. Um, and I can't just put it on speaker screen because when I do that, it goes to Christo. Um, so I, I can't change that. Anyhow, all right, let's jump into the lesson for the day. The lesson for today is, is lesson 200. In the 365 lessons, we are going to go to lesson 200. The title of this lesson is called, There is no peace except the peace of God. So it's pretty pretty clear that there is absolutely no way to achieve peace except to experience peace by having the peace of God be activated inside of us. We don't get peace from God outside of us. We find peace when we align with God inside of us. Once we give ourselves permission to accept the peace of God within us, well, then we will always be in a peaceful state because we will be experiencing the peace of God, which is the only peace that there is. So, so let's talk about this particular, um, this so strange how this keeps jumping around. Okay, well, we'll let it be what it is. Uh, how weird. Okay. I'm trying to get this to give me. Okay. We'll just leave it like that. I'm not using my computer. Mine was not allowing me to connect. So I'm using my daughter. So not only is that her computer new to me, um, but having the internet challenges, it makes it a little extra uh, spicy today for me to, to figure out what's going on, but I'm just going to let it be the way that it is. So it keeps highlighting different people as speakers, except for me. So on the recording, um, we'll just have everybody showing up because I can't just highlight uh, me, who is the actual speaker. All right, lesson 200. Lesson 200, there is no peace except the peace of God. Paragraph one, it starts off with, seek you no further 
you will not find peace except the peace of God. My goodness, it cannot get any simpler than that. The peace that we're all looking for is only going to come through aligning with God and accepting the peace that God has for us. Sentence number three says, accept this fact and save yourself the agony of yet more bitter disappointments, bleak despair, and sense of icy hopelessness and doubt. Seek you no further. There is nothing else for you to find except the peace of God, unless you seek for misery and pain. All right, that's, that's it. That's the peace, misery, and pain. So that's what the work of this awakening uh, journey, this whatever you want to call it, the journey to ascension, the journey of awakening, the path to enlightenment, the path of self-discovery. We're always seeking to get to a place where things are going to be peaceful, where we will find peace. If we are not committed to finding peace only in God, it's going to be a turbulent journey. Yes, many of us have been to ashrams. We've been to retreat centers. We've been on holiday. We've been to the beach. We've been to the mountain. We've done a lot of things that we have found peace, but it's always temporary because the peace that we find there is the peace we think the mountain gave us or the, the meditation gave us or the beach gave it to us. And that's not our peace. That's the peace that belongs to the beach or belongs to the mountains or belongs to the meditation, to the, the space that you meditate in. The peace that passes all understanding is the peace that comes only when we seek it from only God. So logic says, well, if I've got to get my peace from God, that's the only place where peace is, then let me find God. And where is God? As we've been taught by many, many, many gurus and masters and sages and avatars, the kingdom of heaven is within. God is inside. So it's a journey to go within and find God inside of us. And to find God inside of us, we must understand what is the voice for God? What is the voice for the ego? Because the ego sounds a lot like God until we transcend our spiritualized ego. And until we have transcended the spiritualized ego that thinks I am God, we are. But when we recognize that we are God in a humble way, we recognize that we are God, but so is everybody else. When we are really clear of the connection of the oneness that is on this, um, in this universe, not only me with each and every one of you, but with everything that is in my city, in my country, in my continent, in this planet, and in the entire cosmos, until we understand that connection to all that is, we cannot understand not only what God is, but we cannot fully comprehend why then God is within and accept that God is in everybody else. Because when we find God inside, we become very peaceful and we have no issues with anybody outside of us because we recognize that they too are the presence of God itself. And that connection has to be not only made intellectually, it has to happen at the head level, but it has to happen at the heart level. It has to be integrated in the heart. Once we feel it in the heart, our body then becomes fully integrated with that awareness as well. Mind, body, heart, spirit, if you want to call it that. All right. So paragraph number two says, this is the final point to which, to which each one must come at last to lay aside all hope of finding happiness where there is none, of being saved by what can only hurt, of making peace of chaos, joy of pain, and heaven out of hell. So for many, including seekers on the spiritual journey, we are going to be looking for love in all the wrong places. We're going to be looking for happiness and joy and enlightenment in all the wrong places. It's just part of the way it works. 
and it says it real, real clear here. This is the final point to, we, to which each one must come to at last. There is no other way to experiencing total, complete peace until we come to know God. Until then, we will think peace is in having money in the bank account. Peace is in having a lover. Peace is in getting married. Peace is in getting the divorce. Peace is in getting promoted. Peace is in retiring. Peace is in achieving this, that, or the other. All of them sending us on journeys to seek something outside of ourselves. There's that little sound. There's an automatic little, um, uh, it's, it's a photo, a video photo thing that's automatic that displays. And there's a little video of my grandson laughing and it goes through a rotation. So we'll probably hear it again in 30 minutes, um, which is so precious. So when we understand that we have to exhaust all of our seeking outside of ourselves, we have to go through whatever path we go through and everybody is on the path that they need to be on. And people are seeking for peace right now in through war. We have been told, you know, governments have sold us this, this nonsense that we maintain peace through having a strong military military that can go to war with our enemies. We have been told that we will have peace when we achieve the, the highest financial potential that we possibly can. When we get promoted and get the raise, then we are at peace. So lots of people are seeking for peace in the path that they've been told is the path for them to find it. That is why we are not all going to come to peace as a global community as a galactic community until all come to acknowledge that the path to peace is only through God and God can only be found inside. So we've got a lot of work to do. Um, when you think about it that way, we have 8 billion people on the planet and the majority is looking for peace through a specific means, even if it is through God, but it's a God that is outside of them. Most religions, I haven't met I haven't seen a religion yet that brings you inside and connect with God inside. So the religions that I'm familiar with put you out, put God outside on a cloud somewhere that you have to get to it through the church. The church becomes the middle way, be it the Pope or the Cardinal or the rabbi, you've got to go to them and they will tell you where God is. And rarely, unless they have found God inside, do they teach you to go inside and find God there. So this is the final place you will ever have to go to to find peace. The decision upon us right now, the invitation in, during this, this transmission that we're in right now, are you ready to stop looking where God is not and start looking where God is? If you are ready, you must be 100% committed. There cannot be any exceptions. Or you might find 10% peace or 20% peace if you're only 10% or 20% committed. But if you're 100% committed, you will know always and forevermore that peace comes only from knowing God. And God is in you, which means you've got to come to know that you are God. And in that connection, in that realization, I and the Father, Mother, God are one begins a totally, completely different journey than the journey our ego has had us on. So sentence number two says, attempt no more to win through losing, nor to die to live. You cannot but be asking for defeat. Interesting choice of words. Attempt no more to win through losing. Every single time that we think we're going to get peace through something external, we are setting ourselves up for loss because the peace will be temporary. You get the promotion, you get the partner. It will be temporary. You will feel the excitement, the exhilaration, but that is always transient because it's of this world. Even if you get the partner and it lasts for, let's say, the rest of your life and they transition of old age. When they transition, you're going to feel like you lost your peace because they left. If you get the promotion, you will feel the exhilaration only until it's time for another promotion. Once you get bored of that 
level that you achieved and you want another one, then, then you're going to lose your piece until you get the next promotion. That's why it, it tells us that you can't win through losing. And it's a losing battle to look for peace outside yourself because everything external is temporary and designed to come and to go. Then the other one says, you don't have to die to live, meaning you don't have to die uh, and complete this lifetime and go to heaven to find peace. You, you don't have to do that. Now, that will happen. Every single one of us that transitions is going to realize, oh my gosh, I left this world, but I'm in heaven because that's where we've always been. Only you have to lose your human mental chatter in order to accept your oneness with God, but it happens after you die. We have been invited to understand that the way that Jesus taught us, some of you are in a class and we've been talking about the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus was to enter into an incarnation, take on a physical vessel, and that physical vessel, when you realize that that's not who you really are, that physical vessel is going to go through a process of crucifixion. And if you know, as Jesus knew, that you're eternal, then the body gets crucified and all of the stuff that you have, the material stuff, the job can go away, the partner can go away, the money can go away, it gets crucified. You are still one with the creative source when you know, like Jesus knew, that you're not a body. However, we are being invited to not have to crucify our body to be released into eternal life. We are being invited to crucify our idea that we are a body, to let go of believing you're limited inside of this meat suit, to accept that you are one with all that is, because the only way for us to understand our connection with God is to know that we are the energy that everything is made of. How else can you be one with God? if not for the fact that you are made of the energy that God is, that all is, that makes everything. And that requires that we crucify the mind, the limited thinking, that we let go of believing that. That idea that that's who we are, based on our, our mental chatter, based on our belief system, we need to let go of thinking that that is who we are because that is a limitation. It's an obstacle to actually knowing what we are. That means we have to stop thinking that we, me, Lina, is so special and let myself be just as ordinary as everything else because in that ordinariness, that allows me to be the same, equal with everything else, I will come closer to knowing what I am. I cannot know who I am if I think I'm Lina and special and different and better than or lesser than. That is an obstacle to the truth of who we are. So we don't have to die to the physical body and go to heaven to find out God, even though we will. We just need to let go, let the identity of this separate sense of self, let that die, let that complete, let that end. Then you can resurrect the truth of who you are. That's always been inside of us. Let that come forth and be what guides us, what leads us. So you cannot but be asking for defeat is the last point there. Every single time you go look for God where God is not. And, and what, is, what is kind of an interesting paradox? So God is everywhere, but... Even though God is in everything we see, we cannot cultivate a personal relationship with God outside of ourselves at the temple or at the beach or at the mountain or through the partnership. The relationship with God has to be created inside. And uh, Yuri, I know you just joined us. So we're reading from lesson 200, which is titled, There is no peace except the peace of God. And we're speaking to, to where is God? God is inside. And the first two sentences says, seek no further. You will not find peace except the peace of God. So now we're reading in paragraph number three, that is teaching us where to find God, what God is and how to really connect with God. So paragraph three, yet you, you can ask as easily for love 
for happiness and for eternal life in peace that has no ending. Ask for this and you can only win. To ask for what you have already, already must succeed. Listen to that sentence. To ask for what you have already must succeed. So if God placed itself within us so that we, so that God can express itself uniquely as Lina, as Kat, as Christo, as the leaves, as the water, as the, the animals, you know, roaming in, in the wild, because God is the energy of all that is, and it is in all that is, we will always succeed when we find God where God is which is so beautiful. So each individual thing, the blade of grass doesn't take on a personality and a belief system that it's got to go find um, for, for God in greener pastures. It just, it just is the blade of grass being itself completely, not at odds with itself. The only thing that is at odds with itself are humans because we have an ego. An ego is nothing more than beliefs that block the truth of who we are. So that is what we're learning. Don't believe what blocks the truth, accept the truth of who you are and you will succeed. All the love, the joy, the happiness that we're looking for, it can only be found where, when we go to where the peace was placed and the peace is God's inside of us. Let me keep going here. So to ask, to ask for what you already, what you have already must succeed, which is just common sense. To ask for what is false, be true, can only fail. We cannot expect to attempt to make true what is not true, what is false. If God isn't here, stop looking outside of yourself. And that's what this is telling us. Go to where it is because that's the only way to succeed. So forgive yourself for vain imaginings and seek no longer what you cannot find. The Course in Miracles teaches us to forgive ourselves for forgetting the truth of who we are, to forgive ourselves for forgetting how simple and easy this entire journey could really be if we allow ourselves to receive what is already so. And that requires that you get comfortable with possibly being wrong about what you know. And once you get comfortable not believing your, your own ego thoughts, you literally begin to quiet that part of you that is telling you lies when you are onto it because it's lying to you, because it's programming, it's conditioning, it's information given to you by those who do not understand or don't want you to understand that God is inside of you. Then it goes on to say that, for what could be more foolish than to seek and seek and seek again for hell when you have but to look with open eyes to find that heaven lies before you through a door that opens easily to welcome you. Every one of us has a door within and the door is quite simple. Choose to listen to the voice for God. It will guide you to that peace, to that joy, to that abundance, to whatever it is that you're wanting. It wants to give us all of that. Why? Because it wants to experience all of that through us. Our desires are an indicator of what God wants to experience through each and every one of us. And when we are committed to opening the door that lets us listen to God is only because we have shut the door to the voice of the eagle. You have to say no to the voice of fear. You are wrong. That fear is not the truth of who I am. And begin to use fear as an indicator of where you have false beliefs so that you can then decide, I'm not going to listen to that false belief because I want to get out of hell. And hell is to live your life in fear. Heaven is to live your life aligned with God so you are free. So you are at peace. The next paragraph, so beautiful. Paragraph four starts with, come home. Come home. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms that have no meaning to you. Though you sought to make them meaningful, 
This world is not where you belong. You are a stranger here, but it is given you to find the means whereby the world no longer seems to be a prisoner, a, a prison house or jail for anyone. That paragraph is not only packed with powerful, powerful truth, but it is also an opportunity for those who understand that we are, that this planet is not all there is, that there is more beyond what we see as real, that there is so much beyond the physical that we see. So let me read this again. Come home. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms that have no meaning to you, though you sought to make them meaningful. You are not going to find home in a partner, in a job, in a bunch of money, in a big house, in a perfect job. That's not where home is. Those are things you get to experience while you're in your physical body, but that's not home. Our mind has been conditioned to believe that that is what we need to feel safe, to feel at home. It goes on to say, this world is not where you belong. Why would the Course in Miracles tell us that this world that we're in is not where we belong? Very simply, because it wants us to understand that the world that we think we're in has been made by our ego. The things of the world that are crumbling right now have been made by humans whose mind has worshiped the ego, whose mind has been righteously listening to the voice of the ego, which is selfish and greedy and all about me. So that voice that tells us, I've got to get this to be happy. I've got to get that to be happy. Always will seek a position of power because it knows that on this planet, we have all participated in this game called the authority has authority over everybody else. The eagle, which is all about me, has made itself the authority over everybody else through positions of power, be they presidents, dictators, CEOs of companies, sometimes just heads of a family. And when, when we believe that we are the authority over others, we don't understand equality. We don't understand that God created all of us exactly the same way. And when we don't respect one another, we begin to take advantage of each other. And if we're in positions of power, we will, there's, there's almost inevitably, not all, but inevitably, the majority of people who go to positions of power begin to start cultivating not only a love for power, but a love for money. This happens because we don't understand the, dis the distinction between the voice of the ego and the voice for God. From the moment that we're born, we have the voice of God available to us. And it's available to us very easily for the first couple of years of our lives. But it begins to get blocked when the, the voice for the ego, the voice of mom, dad, teachers, preachers, the government, the media, begin to fill our mind with ideas that tell us how things should be. When we listen to how things should be according to what the world tells us, we are operating in a false world. That's what this says. That's not the world that we belong to. But we are in it because we think we are of it. And the only way to get out of this insane world is to unplug from that belief system and begin to cultivate a, a relationship, open the door to what is God's plan for us? What is God's will for us? A lot of people don't want to think God has a plan. So let's use the word will. If we all knew that the creator of all that is has the best plan because it's a plan for happiness, for eternal life and liberty, we would all be so happy to receive the plan that God has for us. But we don't because we need to be right about the plan that our ego has for us. We need to do it this way. No, this is the path to get there. This is how you retire. This is how you graduate. This is how you are happy. All egoic information that we have to get comfortable at some point and say, that's not my truth. 
Once we say that's not my truth, we open the door to then what is our truth? Show me another way. God, what would you have me know? Because that curiosity into discovering God is only possible when we have the courage to say no to the voice that we thought was right. That decision is an internal struggle that all of us have to go, to, have to go through. And it's a struggle simply because it feels like I've been wrong my whole life. Well, pretty much, pretty much. We've been chasing things that don't give us happiness. We've been attempting to create our space and, and, and have our own house, especially here in the, in the West. I've got to have my space. I've got to decorate a certain way. And it's got to look because this is where I'm safe. And this is what, it, what the world needs to see so they can see who I am. Completely, completely nonsense that has been made up. How many monkeys do you know are decorating the tree branches and trying to let other people know, oh, look at my tree branch is better than your tree branch. They don't do that. They just enjoy what is there because they know that home is the whole, the whole planet. And in their own experience, that tree, every branch is home and they partake of what is there because nobody's getting in their mind telling them, Oh, your branch is not so pretty. It's not, you don't have the latest color. You don't have the latest designer stuff on your branch. So the mind has to be cleaned out of the misinformation that has us distracted, attempting to make this world our reality, when in reality, we are not of this world. Then this goes on to say, you are a stranger here. But it is given you to find the means whereby the world no longer seems to be a prison house or jail for anyone. Right now, the world is in the middle of a battle, a battle for freedom, because so many of us have been awakened to the realization that we've been living in a matrix a matrix that we have agreed to because our mind got programmed and we believe what was in our mind because we all were taught you need to be right about what you believe. And in that's, you know, that's what makes you somebody is what you believe. So humanity is waking up for a natural desire to seek for God. It's a desire to seek for peace. It's a desire to seek for freedom. And when that gets activated inside of us, we then find the courage to move through the beliefs in our head. Because if you, will, if you are willing, because you have the courage to question every single belief, is this really true? Is this belief supporting the, the, the truth that God's peace is in me? Is this belief supporting that I am eternal? Or is this belief supporting that I need to continue hoarding, that I need to continue to create, you know, safety for myself? Because all that that shows us is that we don't really trust God. We don't really trust that we will be fine no matter where we are. It's a simple little test. Can you walk out of your house today and feel totally safe if you never go back there and you know that your next meal will be provided for, you know that you'll have a place to sleep if you decide to walk out and not ever return. If we could all say, yeah, I, I totally believe that we'll have peace on earth because now we won't be defending, protecting our stuff, which is what this world is made of. And we're an alien in that world because we are eternal beings who know deep down inside when we align and connect with God, that we are happy anywhere because happiness is what we are, that we are safe anywhere because we're in the mind of God, that we have abundance because our mind creates our reality, that whatever you imagine can become our, our experienced reality. But we have to make the commitment through courage to get curious about what else is there. And when we read lessons like this, Lesson 200, and we see something that says, this world is not where you belong. Do we just read it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, this is a crazy world. I don't belong here. Or do you study what does this mean? Where, where do I really belong? The ego won't let you really study 
where do you really belong? Because the ego is the distraction from the truth of where we belong. Let's go to paragraph number five. Freedom is, giving, is given you where you be held by chains and iron doors. So right here on this planet that feels like a prison house, that feels like it's constricting us, right here, we could find that freedom, even though we see the, the house, the mortgage, you know, something that is binding us, even while we see that, we could find our peace right here, find our freedom right here. And that process comes through detachment, detachment of giving importance to the things that we thought were important before. So yes, freedom is given you right here where we, where we are experiencing the chains and the iron doors, but you must change your mind about the purpose of the world if you would find escape. We cannot get out of the ego's insanity until we find the courage and then the willingness to do whatever it takes to escape it. And there's only one way out. And that is to question the thoughts that are not true by first admitting you've been wrong all along when you've been listening to the ego. When the ego becomes our authority, we've been blocking God, who is the ultimate authority, who is the creator of all that is. So we have to come to the place internally where I must be wrong if I want to find freedom with God. And that requires that you don't believe anything that you believe. <laughs> I know it's, it can be kind of a, a challenging time, but there's no way out except for to stop believing the things that make us suffer. I mean, it's so simple, isn't it? If you don't want to suffer, don't believe fear-inducing thoughts. So paragraph still number five, sentence number three. You will be bound till all the world is seen by you as blessed and everyone made free of your mistakes and honored as he, she is. You made him not. We didn't create our brothers and sisters. No more yourself. We didn't create ourselves. And as you free the one, the other is accepted as he is. So very simple. There's only one way out of this. And we need to begin to bless everybody, begin to see everybody as the powerful creator that they are. The only distinction that we can make between people that is appropriate if we want to be free is those who know the truth and the truth has set them free. They know that we're all children of God and those who live under the mistaken information those who are living in a lie and thinking it true, which means those who are free, they're freely giving love. They love all that is. They know the truth. They know we're all one. Those who are living the lie are protecting themselves, are scared, are attempting to control, are attempting to get safe, are attempting to gather, to get, to create a sense of self that makes them feel safe. They are calling for love because all they know is fear. Even if they're in positions of power, if they're not seeing everybody as equals and, and treating everybody as the free beings that God created them to be by recognizing they didn't create them, it tells us right here, you didn't make anybody else. You didn't even make yourself. We were created in the image of a creator who created us to through each and every one of us come in and experience all that life has to offer on this physical planet. That world that God created, the planet of infinite potential, the, the, what you could call it heaven on earth, you could call it the garden of Eden. That planet exists where everything gets created and no human can create it. Even if the humans can say, well, I've made my child not really. You came together with another person to activate the, the egg and the sperm that creates the child, makes the child, but the egg and the sperm were created by God. We don't create that. So we've got to get really clear where life comes from. 
two of us come together to have that experience. So when God experiencing itself as a male over here and experiencing itself as a female over here come together, and yes, it takes a male and a female to bring life about, those two come together to activate what God already created as life inside of each one, it takes both sides, both parts come together as one, then a human is made, but we don't create them. We don't have the ability to create the egg and the sperm. God does that. We don't create our bodies. God does that. The intelligence and no scientist has ever been able to create life. It's not possible. They can put eggs and sperms together through in vitro fertilization and test tubing and all of that, but they don't create the essence, the foundation of life itself. So coming to the place of humbleness, no, I didn't create myself. What created me must have created you. What is that power that created all of us? If it created us in its image, it created us equal. So coming to the place of questioning every belief that creates separation is is an important part of this journey. And we are being invited right here to recognize that as we free ourselves of the lies, we open ourselves to the truth and the truth will set us free. So freedom and truth go together. And this world right now, full of lies, full of censoring truths, full of misinformation, full of control and and activation of fear, inducing fear, um, attempting to confuse people, telling men that they're women, women that they're men, creating so much complexity that is absolutely classic ego. Ego loves to complicate things so it gives it something to do. So it can think that it is special and better because it has the PhD or the extra degree to fix it or to you know, understand it. That mind we are beginning to see clearly through it that ego mind that is running so much of the world now is being seen by those who have pulled out of the matrix, have freed themselves enough to realize that those people are not at peace. Those people that run the world are not at peace. The ones who are in charge of all of these things are not at peace. If anything, they create chaos. But you can't understand that and free yourself from that insanity until you have committed to coming within to find the real peace and say, it's not outside of me. It's not in the world that keeps shifting and changing and morphing and transforming. Peace is only in that which is the same always and forevermore. What is it that life comes from? That spark inside each and every one of us that activated the creation of this body, not the mom and dad that came together for that activation to do its thing, but rather the activation itself that only God placed there by intelligent design, creating a relationship with that, that spark is how we come to find the light of God that is within us. That's why we need to become enlightened, to come to know the spark as the light of God that is inside of us. Once we cultivate a relationship with that, we come to know God within. Once we begin to listen to what God has to say to us and no longer listen to the voice of the ego that is conditioned in fear, we begin to see everybody, those who are free, they're freely giving of their love, their, their love for everybody because they know we're one. Those who are in bondage, who are living with fear, they're calling for love because they live in terror. That's why they keep protecting themselves, controlling others because they're out of control themselves. Paragraph six says, what does forgiveness do? In truth, it has no function and does nothing. Isn't this interesting for those of you who have been students of A Course in Miracles for a long time? Ultimately, forgiveness has no function. For it is unknown in heaven. It is only hell where it is needed and where it must serve a mighty function. Is not the escape of God's beloved son from evil dreams that he imagines 
yet beliefs are true, a worthy purpose? Who could hope for more while there appears to be a choice to make between success and failure, love and fear? So we only need to use forgiveness to forgive ourselves from the insanity. Once you're free and you're listening to God and you're loving all that is, and you are caring and sharing and you operate from a knowingness that there's more than enough to go around, why, what would there be to forgive? Who would you forgive? Why would you forgive yourself if you're just loving all the time? If you're honest all the time, if you are collaborating all the time, if you're operating from knowing abundance and you're generous all the time, what would you forgive? Think about it logically. Nobody needs to be forgiven when they operate from love. So forgiveness is used only for listening to the ego. We forgive those who listen to their ego. Do you have to forgive those who are generous and kind and, and honest? No, you don't have to forgive them. So forgiveness is only for the world of hell that we have created out of this planet. Forgiveness is not needed in heaven. And heaven, as we're studying here, heaven is the recognition of where God is, which is within us. Find your happy, peaceful place. Forgiveness is no longer necessary. But to escape hell, we need forgiveness. We use forgiveness to remind ourselves that there is another way. So we forgive ourselves for the wrong thinking that created the matrix, that created the suffering. We forgive ourselves for that. And then we move forward. We move forward to something yet to be created, something that we do not remember while the mind is filled with misinformation. The remembering of the new earth, of the heaven, of the, of, you know, the Garden of Eden, that begins to enter into a mind that has been cleaned up of misperceptions. So think of your mind as an empty container when you're a child. And then think of the lies as, as let's say, black uh, cotton balls that are placed in the mind. That our ego is those black cotton balls. And the truth as the white cotton balls. Think of the truth that you know is true. Well, most of us are taught very little truth. So let's say we have 5% truth in there because you feel it, you know it within you and, and you're blessed to have somebody in your life who's conscious, who teaches you truth, starting with all your answers are inside. Don't look for authority outside of you. If we took an inventory of those cotton balls in our mind, we will find, like I said, 5%, maybe 10% are truth. The other 90 to 95% are lies that we've been told. Lies about us. You're not a body. That's not all that you are. You have a body, but you're not a body. You are the energy that chose to have a physical expression. Who you are is non-physical. That's why you're not from this planet. It tells us right here, we're aliens here. Let me read that again. Come home, paragraph four. You have not found your happiness in foreign places and in alien forms that have no meaning to you though you sought to make them meaningful. This world is not where you belong. You are a stranger here. If you're a stranger here, what are you? Well, guess what? You're an alien. You're an ET. You're not of this world. You are foreign, completely foreign. Get comfortable with that. Because when you begin to accept that you are not of this world, that you are non-physical, you begin to accept more of the truth of who you are. As you allow yourself to begin to connect with the more that you are, you can more easily, because that becomes light. Those are the white cotton balls. You put another white cotton ball in there, you can see the dark ones more clearly. It's like you bring a match into a dark room. You can see more clearly what was already in that room that was dark. And you can begin to question the lies that the cotton ball represents. Each time you go, oh, oh, I'm a body. No, that's not true. That cotton ball gets transformed into light. It becomes white. Now you're 11% truth, only 89% lies. And that process of questioning what is in our mind is the process of waking up. It's the process that allows us to enlighten ourselves, to bring the light 
that frees us, the light of truth that frees us. Let's go to paragraph number seven. Paragraph number seven says, there is no peace except the peace of God, because he has one son, which every one of us is the one child of God, who cannot make a world in opposition to God's will and to his own. So no matter how hard we try, we cannot oppose God because God's will is the almighty power that runs everything. We can block it and create misery, absolutely, but we cannot oppose God's will, which is the same as his will. So God's will, when we accept God's will, and we're going to stop there with that sentence, because we've got to get really clear. God created us not only equal because there's only one, one son, one daughter. Why? Because we're all made of the same one energy. So God only has one energy appearing as all these different beings. When we accept the oneness, we are not from this world. We are foreign here. We are non-physical, eternal beings. The larger part of us is non-physical. That non-physical self expresses itself uniquely through each and every one of us which means don't make a big deal out of your body, your stuff, your what belongs to you, what has your name on it, because all of that is a temporary costume, temporary props that you're playing with in this lifetime. What you are is a non-physical eternal self that we must come to know, not only as the God that of all that is, because it's that energy that creates everything, but as the God that is inside of us, that animates us, that is the spark, that is the light. That's why we become enlightened. We come to know the light that is within us and we amplify it. You amplify the light by questioning what is not true. That is what creates the darkness. It blocks you from knowing truth. So it creates darkness. It's a block to your light shining. So the light gets suppressed, gets depressed, gets re recedes because you're believing things that are not true, that add layers of obstacles, layers of darkness until your mind is so filled with untruths that you forget that you even have the ability to question what's in your mind. If you receive it from the outside, chances are 99.9% .9 it's made up. It's not true. If it comes from within, and it comes from within because some people outside may say the truth and it activates your own inner truth. If it comes from within, if it's activated internally, even if it is said outside, as we are doing right here, if you feel the truth of these words inside of you, you're not getting them from me. I'm just reminding you of what's already in you that's the truth that will set you free. So if you want peace in your life, you must know that it comes from knowing the truth. And the truth can only be found inside. Because the keeper of the truth, the one who created what is true, is God itself in you. And accepting that magnificence inside of you and cultivating a relationship with God requires that you look at all of your beliefs about God, question them. If they came from the outside, they're not true. Stories in the Bible, stories in different religious teachings or, you know, mystical teachings or, or uh, you know, children's stories, mythology, Disney World, all those things have been told to us about God and creator and source. If they're made up, they absolutely will feel as untrue to you. They will feel completely irrelevant. And they are the very beliefs that are not allowing you to feel the peace that will set you free. So that is it in terms of the, the teachings today. You know what, maybe next week we can continue um, on that, but I wanna open it up. If anybody has any thoughts or comments, um, I would love to hear from you. Did you get any nuggets from the teachings of today? Please unmute yourself and share with me. Did you enjoy this? At the very least, somebody will unmute themselves and tell me, did you enjoy the, the teachings? Did you hear something?
that activated something yummy in you? Let me know, please. Hello. Yes, Cat. Yes, Cat and Crystal. How about we go to, let's oh. go to Cat first. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, oh, gosh. I, I really, this really hit wonderful places. Um, and I, um, I mean, I always get things, uh, from these conversations, these nuggets. So this was just absolutely beautiful. I have my book over here in my notes. Um, I just, I guess it's so important to remember that the only peace is through God. And like today, I went for a walk in nature, uh, a nature path, and um, it just connected with 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 nature connects me, you know, with God. And then I had a I had a really good experience last night with forgiveness. And um, do you, I don't know if you remember the lady that like called me out that lives in this my condo units and she sent a thing around saying I wasn't vaxxed and she was going to totally ignore and she was just like uh, well I, she was at an event last night cook out last night for the condo and I just totally I just well I decided before I went I knew she'd be there and I thought I'm just going to shed just love and light which I did and I just totally I embraced her and I uh, let her know that we had a little guy had an accident down he fell and she's a nurse she was a nurse so anyway I just let her know that the community was blessed with her uh, being here and for having her there and uh, it just softened her right up <laughs> and uh, it, it was soft inside me so when I say soft it was just Gentle, yeah. There's no judgment whatsoever, whatsoever. In yeah. fact, I just embraced her as a child of God. So that was a, that was that was big. Um, I, I knew it would come, and I'd already I'd already forgiven her in my, but I don't. But yet it was it was so powerful to actually do it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, thank you. When you softened yourself, you became the change you wanted to see in the world. And by not attacking her, she felt safe in your presence. And then she could be, could be gentle with you as well. Thank you so much for that. Oh, Kat, what a beautiful, beautiful um, share. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. And what about you, Christo? What about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were unmuting yourself. I thought you were going to. No, I was. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only playing with, with Oh, okay. Um, the, you know, there's such a subtle, for me, there's a, there's, it was an interesting reminder that, that um, how relaxed one can feel when you realize that you're not worshiping your, yourself as ego or your physical body as that's all that it is, you know. That, that you are a spiritual being having a physical experience. And the, the trap that um, I know some people fall into, and I know I, I had many years ago recognized that, oh, so I don't have to worry too much about my physical body because it's replaceable. You know, I'll come back and back. But, but the double-edged sword around it for me is if I want to, do I want to drive a dirty motor vehicle? Do I want to live in a dirty house, I still need to keep my body clean and, and not worship it, but so I can, as a spiritual being, I can express my physical aspect to its optimum because it's a temple, it's a temple of God for my spiritual being to experience. Um, as, as you mentioned, that the egg and the sperm, they, um, the actual creation of that is from God. And we have to look after that creation of the physical structure that comes out of it so that we can optimize our spiritual experience. Uh, and, and so there's still a responsibility, I feel, for myself to take care of um, and not get caught in the trap of, oh, how good I look. And this because I take care of myself. But how, how good can I express my spiritual nature 
through my vehicle. The, the razor's edge of, of traps in that whole journey is, is, is huge. And, um, yeah, beautiful. And it's, so, it's so good to be grounded in the fact that you're a spiritual being. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for that, that wonderful share. Absolutely. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you for that. Anybody else? And then we will wrap this up. And remember that we are going to be shifting to the Patreon platform. And I will be sending to everybody a link uh, next week. So we will be meeting here uh, through the month of May, which let me look at my calendar really quickly. That is the 25th. So next week, but then after that, June 1st, which will be in two weeks, we will meet in Patreon. And to be part of that, you'll have to join that Patreon, pa join me there in that community. And it's going to be $9 a month, but I'll send everybody the link. I'll email it to you or text it to you next week after we complete our final gathering here in this free format. And then there'll be a new Zoom link that will be part of Patreon. But anyways, thank you all so much for being a part of this conversation. I love you all. And I appreciate because when I get to share with you, stuff flows through me. I'm going to listen to this again, because there were things that were said for me to listen, to hear, um, but they get activated through sharing it with you. God keeps giving me so much wisdom, but I have to share it to receive it. So it's that beautiful um, process of giving and receiving are one. And I've learned it through teaching God's truth is that if I want to keep feeling it, I must give it away. And you guys give me the opportunity when you come and listen to share it with you. So thank you all so much for being here. I love you all. And I will see you next week. Thank you, Lina. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Pat and Crystal, for your beautiful shares. All right. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.